What's up Sim Races at Larry TJR Sim here and today I want to cover a quick review of a sequential shifter from Sim Magic called a Q1. This is a, in fact it's actually called a Q1 long handle. They have um, one is an H pattern with sequential mix. They have this Sim Magic Q1 long handle and then they have a Q1S which would I believe the S stands for a soft handle, so softer pull. A little, it's supposed to be a little bit quieter than this one. Just to give you an example of the sound of this one pretty quick. There you go. I don't have to come to the camera for you to hear this. Let's see. It's quite tough. Oops. Get hold of it. There you go. <laughs> pretty loud. This is by far the loudest thing I have on my whole rig. I'm using the P1X from Sim Labs. Uh, I have uh, D-Box motion. Super quiet. I've had four, six transducers of butt kickers on there. This is as loud as all six of those. So if you're in an apartment, probably not a wise choice. However, if you're like me and you have your own sim room and uh, it doesn't matter when you're playing, you're not disturbing anybody because you're off on your own, this thing is badass. So uh, let's get in, into it further here. So what this is about. So this is cost-wise 379. Now I picked it up from a local shop uh, called Sim Shop, and uh, they're in Dallas, Texas. So I like to support my local my local uh, shops uh, if I can. Uh, obviously, shipping was super fast. Uh, obviously, because I'm over here in uh, Houston or, or east of Houston, Baytown, Texas. So three days, I believe, it hit my door. So pretty fast shipping. To be expected to just be in the same state, right? Uh, but yeah, a great group of uh, people to talk to. So. Uh, Sent me over, uh, sent me over the shifter. Uh, it wasn't provided to me for this review. I bought it with my own money, uh, and this is solely my opinion of this shifter. So, I've been looking for a shifter for a little while, but uh, an upgraded sequential shifter that is. And uh, the ones I really liked it was the Quaif from Pro Sim. They're quite a bit larger than this, um, and function-wise, they seem. I haven't used that one before, but they seem really close from some of the other reviews I've seen. Uh, but I'm super happy with this one actually. So cost wise, this is 379. You can get an optional L bracket with it, which will mount up to the bottom of this pad here. Yeah, you can see that good. So an L bracket where you basically you can uh, have your profile right here, have the L bracket underneath right here and uh, mount it to the left or mount it to the right of your, of your um, 8020, right? So uh, actually I like the L bracket. I didn't get it because I just mounted it straight up with the uh, two M6 holes here onto the uh, rig. Worked out fine. But I probably will pick up two L brackets whenever I decide. No, I may pick up one L bracket just to uh, have the handbrake right beside it on there. But uh, also I may just put it forward on my rig where my Husenfeld handbrake is. But I digress. You do have an optional L bracket for your for yourself if you need to. So what this is all about is it's got a planetary gear system uh, gear set here, uh, which if you can see it in there, I'll get it in the oops. There you go. See the little the little star in there, the gear set in there. So you have this gear set in there and you're ratcheting against it. Uh, there is a a ball here at the top. Uh, that you're pushing against and then basically that's loaded with a spring in the shaft here I don't really have to take it apart to show you. It's pretty. It's kind of self-explanatory as you see it, but uh, It's got a spring that loads that ball. Of course you tighten up the tensioner in here with provided Allen head you can tighten it up as much as you want to <laughs> Obviously, there's a certain point where you can't tighten up anymore So once you lose your movement in the shifter then I would suggest backing it off uh, one turn so you can at least you know, I'd, uh, not bust the, not bust your ball in there. So, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, really hardy shifter. So USB connections on there, as you can see. I just grabbed a uh, printer cable, USB A, I believe these are. Uh, but you, I like the option that you can mount them on both sides, one or the other. And actually, uh, with this shifter, you can mount it. Say the wheel's facing me this way. You can mount it in this direction where you have. The display of course coming towards you or you can mount it this way if you want to slide it up closer to the rig uh, with the display away from you which obviously makes it a little bit harder and more cumbersome to mess with the buttons but you can do that because you can just hold down this button grab the shifter to where you want it for up shifts and it'll switch the uh, the numbers around for you so pretty cool that it has these options now looking at this 
Uh, this is, of course, programmable. I'll throw up a little video here on the side that will show you how you change the colors on here. Basically, you just hold this button down uh, as your programming button and then click that one and you change the colors over and over to each one. So, they actually all, these are four buttons, obviously. Three are programmable buttons uh, and uh, this one is just your your main button your, your main uh, your main button to control the rest of them the set this is your settings button basically uh, so you can use it to change the settings on the other one but built-in LED indicator as you can see all CNC aluminum machine the thing is beautiful very nice meticulous straight edges it just it just looks I'm looking at it here again but it just looks really nice it's a nice finish on here. Nice anodized black finish on here. I like it. I love the little lightning holes they put here as far as for the Sim Magic logo that slides in there. Red anodization on these uh, rollers here look pretty sweet and then the pop with a little bit of red anodization there as well. Really cool. I like it. Um, now, what else is this? It comes with all the hardware you need. Uh, it comes with the T-nuts that you can use on your aluminum rig, comes with the tools that you see here that I showed you. And of course, your M6 bolts are, if you need some bolts for the rig, I had a few extra bolts, I guess, that you can use for mounting underneath here if you were to use an L bracket. So I'd imagine with the L bracket, you'd get bolting as well. But, well, actually, you know what? Let me back up a little bit. I think those were for you to utilize these, these four here. But since I was just going a straight 80 20 I just use the two M6 brackets otherwise you have these four four extra bolts here to use these other slots so all right so that's pretty much the gist of this thing it's it's a pretty baller baller shifter very very universal very sharp and tactile shifting now for example I have this Husenfeld sequential shifter I'll compare it to these uh, I think they're they're comparable some sorts but this sequential shifter here with um, Husenfeld actually this is a really good shifter if you got it hardly no space on your rig but shifting action is you can hear it it's pretty light even I had to put a short handle on here just to help uh, the moment arm be a lot closer and it not be so light obviously if you put a longer handle on there it's super light to activate and so not too happy with this one I wasn't very begin when I got it years back because I had a tight space but since then I've moved on to say the AOLOG shifter here and this one has been by far my favorite sequential shifter it has a very tactile reviews are up on both of these on my channel if you want to look at them but this has been my go-to sequential shifter for for years now and I really like it. I still like this shifter uh, it's just a right about a right amount I always want more, <laughs> more, but uh, it is pretty close as far as uh, in a really good tactile, positive feel of a shift when you're mechanical feel when you're shifting. So I do like that aspect of it. However, I wanted something that wasn't quite so far down on my rig. I wanted something closer. So when I'm grabbing e brake, I can just grab some shifts really close to it. So here comes the Sim Magic one. So what I liked before, or what I was interested in before, was the Quaif from Simpro. Pro Sim, sorry, uh, and very expensive shifters, and I just couldn't justify spending that much money for a sequential shifter. But uh, since the Magics came out with this, I saw a couple reviews on it, I'm like, okay, this might be the ticket right here. So, uh, lo and behold, super happy with this one. This is a, a great, very sturdy. Actually, it's almost too hard of a shift if you adjust it all the way out. I have it just out to pretty much full lock and then a turn out. Actually, a turn in a quarter out uh, from the full tension right and uh, that feels really good especially when you're just in the heat of the moment doing some rally racing just grabbing gears grabbing gears and bang 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 downshifting uh, it feels awesome as far as that goes so uh, yeah really enjoying this shifter I want to just kind of break down some some in the next segment here I just want to break down some pros and cons for you for this shifter obviously I like the shifter it's nice it's got a uh, very nice build. The handle is like a like a it's a plastic. I, I don't lie. It's a it's a plastic handle. That's probably the only cheaper piece on here is this handle, a chapper, but uh, being plastic or some kind of a Delron material. But I wear gloves, and uh, even without gloves, it feels nice. But 
it's the shifter handle. You can, the nice thing about these is you can put any kind of shifter handle you want on these are standard. It's M8 bolt-in on this one, so. But yeah, let me dive into some of the pros and cons of this shifter up next. So I want to knock out the cons first because I like to leave a nice positive uh, aspect to this product to you. So pros will be last. I mean, obviously if this was a horrible product, I would leave, I would put cons last uh, to leave a lasting impression on you that don't spend your money on it. But uh, so this is the way we'll go. All right. So cons wise, I got my little list here. So uh, on these mappable buttons here, right? So it, it's, it's interesting. You can go ahead and shift it up. And then what kind of keen to my interest is like, oh, cool. When I'm in, I uh, need to go to reverse quickly. I can just hit that button. It goes to neutral. And then I can pop it into reverse, right? And then I'll be ready to go. But obviously, this doesn't, not obviously, but just to let you know, this doesn't sync with the game. This is just a counter and, and, and as this aspect. And if, if you're, I got a little um, OCD, I guess they call it OCD, that where you want your on-screen gear to match this one, it'll drive you nuts. Uh, but... With that said, I hardly ever look at the thing. So I'm just banging gears, watching the screen, and paying attention to what's on the screen. Uh, but that's the only quirk I don't like. I, I, I think some improvement would be to uh, have this where it is synced with the game itself. And then obviously this worked more like a true lockout where, where you could hit the neutral button and then slam it into reverse real quickly in sync with what the game is instead of having to go back through the gears boom 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 say if you're in seventh gear right have to ratchet back down through the gears right in the game you have to do that there's no quick neutral hit so i was hoping this could be a neutral hit switch it in the game to neutral and then pop it back down in reverse it doesn't do that so that's what you're looking for not quite there yet that would be an awesome improvement i think uh, for this but with that said so the, the gear indicator, so again, the gear indicator can be easily lost in its track. One of these buttons is mappable. One of these buttons are not like the other three. <laughs> this button here, like I alluded to in the beginning, uh, this isn't a mappable but button. I wish it was. Uh, it would be really nice to have this to flashers or something like that because they have pre-indication here of, let me see, change this to something you can see on camera here, the purple. So you got the, the lights. The windshield wipers are already pre-printed on there, and then uh, neutral, of course, and then uh, this being your, the red one being your your master programmer for it all, right? But it would have been nice if it could be hazard lights, I mean, for that matter, I don't care, but uh, uh, I would have used it for like flashing or something like that, or, or repair of your vehicle, repair your tires, say like in Dirt Rally or, or WRC, uh, EAWRC, that would have been a great one to be able to use as a mapable button. So in the future, I would love to see this as a mappable button if they can do that uh, and then obviously still have it where you can control the colors on these are put the controllers in a software because uh, sim magic has their own software right so it'd be easy enough to control these in the software uh, and make this all all of these a mappable button so that would be something in the future i would like to see uh, this actually speaking of software this does have software you can download to uh, set up this for adjustments to make sure everything is uh, sequenced correctly this comes pre-calibrated out of the box. I didn't have the need for it, uh, but you can download it and uh, follow it. They actually have a little video of how to do it on the SimMagic uh, channels. But, so there's two things, right? Gear indicator is a miss. Uh, it looks cool on there, but it's just a counter. And then this button isn't programmable. The, the uh, other choice, of course, is the obvious choice is how loud it is. It's not gonna be a shifter for everybody. It's super loud, uh, as you heard. And uh, I don't really care. I mean, it's loud. I can hear it over the speakers in my with my Sennheisers on and, and, and engine sound going and stuff, and I can still hear the clicks. But I love the mechanical feel. And for me, to get that mechanical feel over and have to deal with the loudness is, is totally worth it because it is such a, a nice gated sequence that you just bam, just such a hard mechanical feel. And obviously you can you can lighten it up as well too if it's a little too tough for you. Actually out of the box, the presetting that it's on is pretty dang good. And I was like, hmm, I don't know if I really even need to go harder than that. Uh, but when you get excited into the game and stuff, uh, you could just hammer on this thing so hard, it didn't even, you're not gonna hurt it, right? It's built like a tank. Uh, so it was easy enough for me just to turn it on up. I'm just twist the dial, put your Allen head, and uh, crank it on up. And then, then you have to kind of get yourself recalibrated for it because you're like, oh, wait, it won't, it won't move, right? 
So you have to start yanking on it a little bit more, put a little more force into it, obviously, right? Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it's badass. I like it. So, but <laughs> I was on cons, right? I started switching here. But the only other other con, so basically the the con is the mappable button, the gear indicator is useless. Uh, it's, it's kind of you know it's just a counter at this part. It's loud, not for everybody. And then uh, it only has one knob choice. It has just this longer handle. But in the box, when you see in the unboxing here, it has two slots in the uh, in the styrofoam in there that it came comes with a shorter handle as well. And I've seen some other YouTubers uh, do a review on these, and it had two handles in there. For the price, I would like to have two handles in there, a short one and a tall one. So it'd been nice if they would included both of them, but in this case is only one. Okay, on to the pros, because I already started slipping into pros. Solid build, heavy duty construction. Measurement wise, this is 158 millimeters by 63 by 261.4 high. Uh, so you know, convert that over to inches. And then uh, it's got a, obviously it's a beautiful design here. It's got an extremely sharp tactile feeling. Uh, there's really no slop in this. You have nothing. There is no slop. So that's, uh, my hand's moving down here. You can barely feel something like you'd have to be up here actually to feel it. It's just a slight shim of a slot. I mean, you're talking about two thousandths of a slot. Uh, this is totally normal. This would be totally expected. Now, as far as the slop goes this way, it's a little bit probably hear it not much of a slop going this way and of course that back way it's the same amount of slop this would be normal in a real car okay so not a big deal it's not like you got to overcome a lot of slop before you grab tension you just grab the damn thing and just yank right so uh yeah so that's a little bit of the slop it has but yeah beautiful design tall lever uh so i do like that like i said that was one of the one things i was looking for when i set it in the rig I'm driving, I want to just be able to reach over, reach over and grab the shifter, bang, 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 and keep going. So love that part of it. As the optional software, that's good. So if it did come out of uh, needing calibration, you have an option to recalibrate it. So that's nice that they put that in, in, the, in the build of this, right? The forethought of, of engineering in this. Uh, all sensors for this, got a little magnet in there, green light for when it's on. And then obviously you got your, your gear indicator, which is, a positive as far as aesthetics it looks cool but not as functional uh, as well like I said in the cons but USB outputs on both sides so if you're mounting it this way and you don't want this to be hidden to your leg you can obviously switch the USB to the other side and then of course vice versa if you're left-handed uh, if you're in the, in the UK you drive it on this side you want the USB on the other side boom you got it um, star detents is very much if you look at the pro sim quaif it's almost identical as far as the star uh, detents that it has on here. So obviously they copied the design as far as that goes, uh, which is fine with me because it's a third of the price. And uh, to me, uh, I mean, if those other ones feel better, uh, maybe they do. I don't know. If you're someone that used this one and the Quaif, yeah, drop a comment in the below and, and let me know. Was it worth the extra cash for the Quaif? I would love to get a Quaif in to, to compare them, do a head-to-head -to, -head to them. So. But yeah, uh, very good there in that, as far as that mechanical feel. Adjustable strength, so another pro. Adjustable strength here, you can loosen it up for if you want your kids to play or something like that, or your, or your wife or girlfriend, and, and uh, or someone that's just not as strong as she may be, or doesn't really want all that heavy shifting, uh, that, then you can lighten it up. Now, I think you're using, losing the aspect of what this shifter is really for, which is have a really hard mechanical shift, but you can make it lighter because you're gonna you're gonna deal with the noise anyway, so it might as well have that positive shift. But with that said, even lightening it up, uh, it still feels the same mechanicalness to it, the you know, same pushing that star detent, having that that sprocket basically roll through through its through its cycle, right? There's rotation, uh, so still feels uh, that same mechanical feel, but obviously the force is quite less. Um, three programmable buttons, like I mentioned, uh, the pro color sequence choices. I like the color sequence choices, you know, I got a N NZXT ultimate PC back here and I like the purple on it for some reason. I'm liking the purple right now. Uh, and I was able to switch these to purple. So it was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's, that's nice. Now this button here isn't a, a choice in colors. Uh, so that's the only downside, I guess you can't really switch that one. It's just like a white, a clear white. 
At night, though, driving with this thing, it looks pretty baller, actually. I really like it. What else? And you're able to mount it in both directions, 180 degrees apart, right? So you can mount it to the left side, right side of your rig, and you can mount it just straight up to your 8020. So pros and cons. There's your pros and cons here. Obviously, a ton more pros than you got cons with this puppy. So, all right, let's, let me uh, move into some final words on this up next. All right, so final thoughts or final words on this SimMagic Q1 long handle shifter. Again, if you want something a little bit quieter, uh, the S model would be, would be the ticket, and it will be, of course, less resistance as well. So with great sound comes a great mechanical feel. But final thoughts on this, this is an extremely well-built, fully cnc machined aluminum piece of equipment, right? It, it feels like it belongs in your car, but it's, it's just built. Actually, it's, it's, if you buy any modern cars, this feels like it's built way better than your modern cars would be as far as having a shifter and having a tactile shifter. Uh, if you're a hot rod guy like me growing up, uh, we, we, I liked uh, B&M Ripper shifters uh, for my uh, Cobra Mustang and, and uh, really enjoyed the hard mechanical stops on that. This gives you that feel. It, it's no rubbery feel to anything. It's just, it's just metal to metal, hard mechanical stop. So I love it. It's loud. Uh, it's the only downside for it. It may not be for everybody. Just keep that in mind. But with that loudness, you have that mechanical feel. So it's a trade-off, right? Get the S if you like the way this looks. The S actually doesn't have the display, so it saves you a little bit of money there because it's not really all that. It's just kind of nice aesthetics. Looks cool when you're showing it to people. Uh, people come in and sell on your rig and like, oh, that's cool, and they never look at it again, right? When you're actually driving on it, but it's loud. Uh, but uh, they notice the loudness for sure. But uh, the, uh, the display is, is dropped off on the S. Price-wise, price is really good, $379 for this. Uh, then I think the SIM shop right now has 5% off. So uh, if this video posts before that sale goes off, then sweet. Um, but it is, uh, yeah, price-wise, it's just really good. You got a third of the price from what you get with a Pro SIM Quave. So for me, I think this is worth the money. Uh, obviously, I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to sell it. Um, Sometimes you buy these products, you're like, man, I'll just eBay that one. <laughs> and sell it as like new, and because uh, I take really good care of my stuff, so everything's like new. But uh, that's it. It's, it. it's really the biggest thing that I, I, I don't care for as much as the loudness that I think other people won't care for as much either. It may get tiring on you after a while. But mechanical feel, this is amazing. It feels great. So... Yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, this this short review on the SimMagic Q1 long handle sequential shifter. That's a mouthful. It's it's very robust, beautifully designed. Yeah, make sure that's in the camera. Beautifully designed and uh, very very mechanical feeling. So, till next time, I'll see you on the track. I'm out.